Hey guys, my name is Scobie. Today I'm going to be showing you the best OBS settings for streaming to YouTube. Let's jump right into this. Now this video today is going to focus specifically on just streaming to YouTube. I'm going to do one in the future about streaming specifically to Twitch and some other services in the future if needed. What we're going to do is open up OBS, come down to the bottom right. We're going to be opening up our settings. We're going to be going to the output tab. We're going to be changing our output mode to advanced and we're going to be opening up the streaming tab. Now I'm going to be going through each of these settings on screen right now. We're going to be talking a little bit about each of them. The first setting we're going to be looking at is the audio track. Now when you are streaming, you're only going to be able to stream one of your audio tracks. Now I've done some tutorials in the past about how to edit your multiple audio tracks in OBS. In this case, you cannot stream multiple audio tracks. You can only stream one. So whichever audio track has all the sources you want to use, you should check this one. So say for example, if your audio track number one has your mic and system sound and that's all you want to stream, select audio track number Number one. If you want to check the rest of the tutorials out, I'll leave a playlist in the top of the description. It's got a bunch of OBS tutorials that I recommend checking out. A lot of them will be useful to you if you're watching this video. The next thing we'll be looking at is the encoder, and I recommend leaving this to X264, and I would check and force streaming service encoder settings. X264 is probably the best encoder type to have, especially with YouTube. YouTube prefers X264. Next thing we'll be looking at is the rescale output, and this is really going to be affected by two things, the power of your PC and the actual internet speed you have. And what do I mean by that? I'll be talking about the internet speed a little bit later, but the actual power of your PC is going to be a real factor here. If your PC is powerful, it'll be able to handle up to 1080p, but like I said, this can also be a affected by your internet speed. So now we're going to be moving on to arguably the most important settings down here. And in particular, it's going to be the rate control, the bit rate, and the CPU usage. So the rate control I recommend leaving on CBR for the most part. And the bit rate we're going to be talking about in one second because this is going to be depending on your internet speed. And I will show you how to test what you should be using depending on your actual rescale output settings and your internet speed. So the actual CPU usage will depend on what your PC is like and depending on how powerful your PC is. So what these settings are going to do is allocate a certain amount of your CPU usage usage to encoding and recording and streaming to YouTube. So for example, if your PC is a bit less powerful, you recommend turning this up so OBS is allowed to allocate more of your CPU usage and speed into your streaming to make your stream seem more efficient and uh, more smooth. So I'd recommend turning this up pretty high. I normally recommend leaving it on very fast plus. And this is a little bit of trial and error to see how your PC handles it. So next thing we're going back to is actually the bitrate. And like I said, this is arguably the most important thing. And it's like, what settings do you put this at? Now, thankfully for the best OBS recording settings I've done previously, YouTube also had a spreadsheet like this. I'll leave a card on screen to watch that. YouTube also gave us this nice handy guide on streaming and what streaming settings we should be using. Now, it does give a bitrate range, which is a little bit better for streaming because it will depend a little bit on your internet. So let's say, for example, we want to stream at 720p, 30 frames a second. YouTube recommends a bitrate of 1500 to 4000 kilobits now this might mean that you can go back to obs and depending on what you want you can put in here 1500 or 4000 but how do you know what to put in here so what i would recommend you do is come to this link a link is always in the description down below and this is a speed test for your internet speed it's going to give you your ping it's going to give you your download and it's going to give you your upload now in this case we're really just worried about your upload speed and as you can tell my upload is 3.13 megabytes per second now how does this translate to kilobytes and how do we know what to put in our streaming settings we're going to need one more link and we're going to be coming to a bit calculator. Now what we're going to do is type in here, which is your megabit speed, which is 3.13. Change the units to megabytes and then click calculate. Now you can tell down here our kilobytes per second is 3205. And that's going to be the most important number we're going to be using here. Now I don't recommend capping out your internet speed. I would take 500 to 1000 kilobytes off that just so you have a little bit of extra lean room to work with. So once you know all these settings, you know that, okay, so I can do approximately 2,500 kilobytes per second. We're going to come back to YouTube and we're going to see that, okay, 2,500 kilobytes per second will fit into the 720p range and it will just about fit into the 720p 60 frames per second range. So we're going to be aiming for 2,500. So we're going to go back to our OBS. We're going to go to our settings and we're going to set it to 2,500 and we're going to aim for 60 frames per second. To change your frame rate, you want to come to video and you want to change the common FPS value to 60 or if you want to use 30, you can use it to 30. Once you have this done, you're actually going to start streaming to YouTube and see if it's effective. And if it works and you have no hiccups on your stream, this is the streaming settings you work at. If you find that 60 frames is too powerful on your computer, change it down to 30 and keep it at 2500 and see what works for your PC. There's a little bit of trial and error and all these little tools I've showed you today are going to put you in the right direction to show you what you need to do. But this is what you should aim for and this is how you know what YouTube streaming settings you should be using. All the links for all these tools are going to be in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out the two videos on screen. The one on the left is going to be my most recent upload and the one on the right is going to be one that YouTube most suggests that you will watch. So you should probably click it because it's apparently for you. 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.